I remember talking to a guy once who used an expression uh, as, as a form of a joke, really. Uh, but he said, he said, Father, no, like, I'm, I'm doing my best, like, but I can, I can resist anything except temptation. I can, I can resist anything except, except temptation. And uh, as I say, he said it in a joke. Um, same guy could really have done with resisting temptation a little more often. Uh, but I was thinking about this morning, this uh, first reading, how St. Paul talks to the Philippians about the different circumstances in which he found himself, right? So he says, I know how to be poor. I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation and I'm now ready for anything, anywhere, full stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. So what, what St. Paul is saying, obviously like the, the reading and the gospel, by the way, just a little side note, uh, they're obviously talking about money, which I won't probably talk a whole lot about today. Uh, but what I wanted to focus on was something else, that every circumstance... Every circumstance that's presented to us, every circumstance that we come across, every circumstance that we find ourselves in is an opportunity. Every circumstance is an opportunity. So every, in, in, in every situation, say for example, we're blessed with wealth. That is an opportunity now to build up God's kingdom, to serve, to help. You know, like there are people who will need help. There are good charities that will need support. There are good religious communities that will need help. So if I have plenty, give. All right? And if I have not very much, if I'm poor, okay, again, this is an opportunity to do what? Yeah. Trust. Right? <laughs> right? It's an opportunity to trust that the Lord will provide. So poverty or plenty, both are circumstances, both are opportunities. Right? If I have a lot, I can now use that for good. If I have very little, I can use that opportunity to grow in trust. If I'm healthy... I can use that to, to serve God by, you know, bringing up my kids, giving them time, spending uh, the time I need at work for work, and then when I get home, I dedicate my, my time to them, and I go out kicking balls at them, playing whatever, uh, hurling football, going on to the beach, whatever it may be. I spend time with them. In my healthy body, I can. And then if I'm sick and can't move anymore and can't, you know, run around as I once did, then what? In, in, in the mind of the world, you see, you're kind of a, a weight on society, really. Do you know, you're kind of, your usefulness has passed, a very utilitarian view of people, as we'll see now with the whole discussion on euthanasia as, as it starts to increase. Uh, so my sickness then actually, in reality, in God's sight, becomes an opportunity for me to count more on him, to count more on him. Lord, you gave me this body as a gift, and I give it back to you. You gave me these abilities, and I used them as best I could to build up your kingdom while I had them. So that way, in poverty or in plenty, sickness or in health, everything, everything serves God. Everything serves God. Now, if we stretch that just a small little bit, that also means that your temptations are an opportunity to grow. They're not as such, e even our temptations can serve God. Even our temptations are supposed to serve God, right? If, it's, not like, it's not like God uh, is in some way powerless in the face of the enemy, in the face of Satan, in the face of the demons, and God can't do anything. They're, they're, there they are, running amok around the world, and God's like, sure, what can I do? You know? <laughs> he is God. They're gone, if he wishes. But instead... We, we can actually use temptation as an opportunity for growth, even temptation, okay? So, and, and I, I, I would actually argue that those who struggle in, in a certain area, in a certain way, that's the very area, that's the very place that God wants them to excel in virtue. So say someone like is, is, has a tendency towards addiction, Right? Normally addictions then will change. So if they're not drinking, then they're gambling. If they're not gambling, they're on their phone. If they're not on their phone, they're watching TV. Like the addiction will just kind of will move. So maybe oh, I'm not drinking. Yeah, but I'm spending like 24 hours on the phone or so on and so forth. So this addictive, addictive temptations, addictive mentality, you know. Uh, that then, rather than being the antithesis, the opposite to God, this is my opportunity to grow in self-control. 
and to excel as a saint who lived self-control. If it was easy for me, then it wouldn't be very virtuous. I mean, as I, as I said before, like I have no temptation whatsoever towards alcohol. It just doesn't bother me in the slightest. I drink, not drink, don't care. Uh, so I, I mean, so I'll never be the saint of sobriety, if there is such a thing. You know, I mean, because it's, it's not, it's not, it won't be a virtue for me, like because I don't have to struggle in this area. Whereas other areas where, where I do have to struggle, that's, that's what's hard. That's where I have to kind of, you know, that's where I fall. That's where I'm humiliated. That's where I have to dust myself off and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And up we get again. And with your grace, Lord, I can do these things, as we, as we said in, in the reading. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me the strength. So our temptations then aren't like, it's not like, God is there on his throne and he sees what's coming at me and he sees how weak I am and he sees me fall and goes, oh, there you are, look at what was that about? I think he's more cheering us on because he says, like, it's, it's just like training, it's like in any sport, you know, we've used this, this analogy a million times, like, uh, but if, if, if when, you, when you're training, your coach says, look, you need to learn how to puck on, on your left-hand side, man. Your, your, your right-hand side is good, but your left is very weak, right? Work on your left. I mean, do you go home and say, I'm useless, I've no left. I've no left. I can't hit on my left. I'm never going to be a good hurler because I can't hit on my left. That's just my weakness. What can I do? What can you do? You go home and you practice on your left all day, every day. Keep hitting on your left. Keep hitting on your left. Keep hitting on your left. And then you get like, this left's my strong side. <laughs> Come on, bring it to my left. I dare you. you know? <laughs> so, I mean, the left becomes your strong side. But you, because, you've, because it was pointed out to you, which it needed to be, that's what the coach's job is. Like he's, he's there to get the best out of you. So then what became your weakness, that's what you work on, that's what you excel on. It's hard. It takes discipline. It takes practice. And, and you'll miss. You'll make mistakes. You'll fall. But then you push on through, and voila, you're now a hurler with two sides. For those who aren't, who don't, who aren't from Ireland and don't know what hurling is, it's like hockey, just way better. Okay. Uh, so, so, that, so that's, that, that's how it, it can work in the spiritual life. So I have a certain temptation, a certain weakness. That is the area that God wants me to excel in holiness. That exact weakness. You think of your, your, your Saint Augustine or that, who lived a life full of pleasure and so on and so forth uh, in his youth. And then when he, when he converted, Saint Anthony and Padua, very similarly, by the way, uh, they had still the memories of, of, of things that they had done and pleasures that they had experienced, but they had to excel in the virtue of, of self-renunciation, self-control, chastity. You know, and they did. They did. Like they, <laughs> these thoughts and memories did not disappear. So they had to fight them and push on through and become saints anyway. In fact, maybe even become saints because of their struggle with those temptations. So our temptations aren't, it's not like that's where God has forgotten us or God has left us. This is our opportunity this is our coach lobbing two more, two and a half kg rings on our deadlift bar. For those who don't know what a deadlift is, it's you lift a bar straight off the ground. It's really masculine. All right? It's just, <clears throat> right? And it's, it, it pushes you to your limit. You're like, I'm actually, sorry, like uh, 140. That's actually, I've never done more. I can't. I, I, I can't. And he says, go on, just lob it on two more. Are you kidding me? 142. And like, you're just... <clears throat> All the veins go, so it's, it's class. Um, uh, so all of that, and you, it, it's exactly that. You're getting pushed, you're getting pushed, you're getting pushed, you're getting pushed, and voila, you overcome this plateau that you've been stuck on for years, and now you're deadlifting 160, 180, 200. But like, if, we, if we stop and say, gosh, that's all I can do, well, then you're stuck. Whereas pushing on through, with, always with the grace of God, never, 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 never just on our own steam, that's, that's Pelagianism. Uh, but with the grace of God, then we can overcome the very temptations that, 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 that cause us to fall. Our very weaknesses can become our strengths. And I think that's there's something, then we begin to see like the, the divine plan even in temptation. You know, this isn't where God has forgotten us. This is where God is providing us an opportunity. Here you can grow. Right here. So then, if I can be trusted with a little... I can be trusted with a lot. If I know you can be tested in this area and you will say, Lord, I rely on you for everything I need, I will not fall because I have you, because I love you, because I don't need whatever this stupid temptation is offering me. I don't need it. And the, the more I, I, I grow in that, 
well, then I'm ready for this participation in God's divine power. I'm ready for divinization, right? When we enter heaven, we share in God's divine life. But if I can't be trusted with little things, how on earth can I be trusted with, with sharing in God's power? You know, would I, if, if I can't be trusted to, to use a little time or money or whatever else it may be to build up others, if I'm to get more, I'll just make a bigger mess. So if I can be trusted with little, I can be trusted with a lot. And so in my weaknesses, if I, can, if I see these as opportunities, and this is probably if I watch more business motivational talks, they'd probably talk about this. Every crisis is an opportunity. They'd probably say something like that. Uh, yeah, but every, every difficulty, every crisis is an opportunity. Every temptation is an opportunity. This is, this is how we grow. We don't grow by just, just doing what's easy, just doing what's kind of the virtue that comes naturally to us. That's not how we grow in the spiritual life. But it's by taking on those temptations with the grace of God and overcoming them. And that way then, even Satan, even the demons, serve God. Their temptation serves God. Their temptation serves us. Their temptation affords us an opportunity to grow in virtue. And then it makes sense that God would leave them. Because that's how we grow. They, they, they cause opposition and difficulty and distraction. And we push on through. We fight on through with the grace of God. And we come out stronger. Because we fought. So the Lord does know what he's doing. I know how to be poor. I know how to be rich too. I've been through my initiation and I'm now ready for anything, anywhere, full stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me the strength. Amen.